Well, welcome back. We're on another day of related rates, and today's focus is on similar triangles and the distance formula. So let's dive right in. All right, example number one. If a six-foot-tall man is walking away at a rate of three feet per second from an 18-foot-tall lamppost, how fast is the length of his shadow changing? Well, first and foremost, we better just get a picture sketched out of what we have. And mine's going to be very primitive. You could make it a little more elaborate, um, but I'm just going to use some vertical lines here. So I have an 18-foot-tall lamppost, and I have this man that's walking away. So I'm just going to put an arrow on the end going this way. And he is a six-foot-tall man. And I'm going to continue and create my triangle here. How fast, so I'm looking for a rate, is the length of his shadow changing? So I'll come back to that in a moment. Now, it's probably just easier if I give some variables to things here. I'm going to say the distance between the lamppost and the man. And I'm going to call that x. The distance between the lamppost and the man is x. And then I'm going to go ahead and say the distance between the man and the end of my tip here represents his shadow. So I'm going to use S for shadow. So again, hopefully you can, you can picture this. You've got a guy here, there's a light, this lamppost is shining down, and his shadow's on the ground there. Please don't put any shadows in the air. And now the question saying, now that I have some variables, again, how fast is his shadow changing? So based off this, I am finding the rate of change of S with respect to time. Okay. Now, in fact, this is a pretty simple problem. Um, it, it sounds a little complicated, but it's not too bad. Hopefully, you kind of see the idea of similar triangles back from your geometry days. You have this large triangle, and I'm just going to pull it apart and redraw it below. Hopefully, you would agree it has a height of 18. Now, the sneaky part, and this is by far the sneakiest part. If you catch this, you're in great shape. How would you describe the length of the base? Would you say that's x times x or x plus x? Well, think, if this was 4 and this was 2, I would say that's a total of 6. So I definitely want to add. I'm going to say this has a base of x plus s. And then I've got the smaller triangle, and it has a height of 6 and a base of simply s. Well, so again, I, I told you to think of your geometry days. I just want to stress these are not congruent. They are not equal, but they are similar. Okay, they're similar triangles. And to solve a similar problem, we just set up a nice ratio. So I'm going to say basically side 18 is to side 6. So I'm going to say 18 over 6 as side x plus s is to side s. Now certainly at this point in the game, if you want to take the derivative from here, you're more than welcome to. However, since I'm looking for ds dt, I'm actually going to solve this equation for s. I think that would make the most sense. And then I could avoid quotient rule here. So all I'm simply going to do is a nice cross multiply. So I'm going to get 18s equals 6x plus 6s. And like I said, I'm going to solve for s. So I've got s equals 1 half x. Now, remember, I was finding ds dt, so I'm just going to take this guy's derivative and just take note. Again, I'm taking it with respect to time, so unless you see the letter t, everybody gets a d variable dt. So I've got ds dt equals, one half is just a coefficient, dx dt. And again, I was looking for ds dt. Do I know what dx dt is? Well, let me just scroll back real quickly. Um, that represented the rate that, whoops, I'm sorry the rate that the distance between the lamppost and the man. And they told us that this guy was walking at a rate of 3 feet per second. So I know my dx dt is 3. So I basically have 1 half times 3 for a total of 3 halves feet per second. Now you notice it doesn't matter how far away you are. It doesn't matter if you're 2 feet, 3 feet, 4 feet. You're still walking at the same rate as you go across there. All right, let's try another one. Jim, who is 180 centimeters tall, is walking towards a lamppost, which is three meters high. So again, I'm going to slow down and get my picture drawn out. Uh, Jim is 180 centimeters, and the lamppost is three meters. So that's one thing to pick up on. They're giving you different units, so just be careful with that. 
the lamppost casts a shadow behind him. And again, I just want to make note that Jim is walking towards the lamppost, so I'm going to put an arrow that he's walking this way. Therefore, his shadow is behind him, so I'm going to represent this distance from here to here as S, the shadow behind him. He notices his shadow gets shorter as he moves closer to the lamppost. He is walking at a rate of 2.4 meters per second. So, am I saying the shadow's 2.4 meters or the rate that he's walking is 2.4 meters? Hopefully you would agree that this section where he's walking, which I'm going to call x, is the 2.4 meters per second. So I'm going to say dx dt equals, now another little thing to pick up on, as he's walking to the left here, this distance is getting smaller, so I'm going to make a note that it's negative 2.4 meters per second. Okay, again, this distance is going to get smaller as he's walking, so I'm going to make this a negative value. Now, I, before I dive right in here and set up my problem, I just want to take care of one little piece of business, and that was those units. I don't want two different units involved here. And the question is, you're going to go with meters, you're going to go with centimeters. Well, I think since they gave us a rate in meters per second, I think we should put everybody in meters. So I can easily change 180 centimeters to meters. Um, 100 centimeters makes a meter, so I can just say this is 1.8 meters, and some quick easy math there. Alright, so hopefully you see those similar triangles, just like we had in the previous one. I can highlight them again for you. In the large triangle, when the height is 3, here's the hard part, what would you describe the base as? I would definitely say when the height is 3, that base is x plus s. And in my little triangle, when the height is 1.8, my base is S. So I'm going to say 3 is to 1.8 as X plus S is to S. And lastly, before I go further, let's just review that question. Uh, it says, when he is 2 meters from the lamppost, how fast is the length of his shadow decreasing? So I am finding D, S, D, T. Specifically when he's two meters. All right, so again, I'm going to cross multiply and solve, so I have to avoid quotient rule if I can. So I've got 3s equals 1.8x plus 1.8s. And again, I'm, I want ds dt. Uh, 1.2s equals 1.8x. So s equals 3 halves x. Alright, so I'm going to take this derivative with respect to time. So I've got ds dt equals 3 halves dx dt. Now, notice it doesn't matter what the x variable is. Um, I'm always going to get the same rate. So I have 3 halves times, we were walking away, I believe was at a rate of negative 2.4 meters per second. So times negative 2.4, I get a negative 3.6 meters per second. Now, if I were to actually answer that question, um, I just want to make a note here that it says... It already says the word decreasing, how fast is the length of his shadow decreasing. So I would say at a rate of 3.6 centimeters per second. I wouldn't say it's decreasing at a negative rate. Those two negatives kind of undo each other. All right, lastly, to finish this part B, this question's a little odd, and uh, maybe you'll get a, a better understanding than I do of it. The question says, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving? Okay, and for a while, I always thought these two questions were the exact same. It doesn't say the entire shadow itself. It's saying specifically the tip of the shadow. And what they're implying by that is how fast is this whole base moving? Does that make sense? And again, for a while, for years, I thought these questions were the same, and they're not actually. I'm not finding the whole shadow here. I'm finding the tip of the shadow, which would be this entire line segment. Okay, so let me redraw my picture. So because they're saying that tip of the shadow, again, I, I'm talking about this whole segment here, and I want to give that whole segment one variable to make that even easier on myself. So I'm just going to call this whole base Z. So the question is saying, how fast is the tip of the shadow changing? I'm really finding how fast is Z, DZ, DT changing. 
Okay, so I'm gonna set up a nice proportion again. I'm gonna start with my big triangle. So I'm gonna say, um, let me draw them out real quick. My big triangle has a height of three and a base of Z. My little triangle has a height of 1.8 and a base of S. So as I write that proportion, I'm saying three is to 1.8 as Z is to S. And again, you could derive, I'm going to avoid quotient rule and cross multiply. So I've got 3s equals 1.8z. Um, I'm finding dz dt, so I'm going to solve. I'm going to divide by my 1.8. So I've got z equals 5 thirds s. Now I'll take that derivative with respect to time. Again, if it doesn't have a t in it, you're giving it a d variable dt. So I've got 5 thirds ds dt equals dz dt. And ds dt is what we previously found. We said it was decreasing at a, um, a rate of negative 3.6 uh, equals dz dt. So I should get at a rate of negative 6 uh, meters per second. And there you go. Well, we've made it to the last problem for the night. This one's significantly different from the two previous similar triangles that we just attacked. So, a particle P is moving along the parabola y squared equals 3 minus x. Let's stop there and just sketch out what we are even talking about. Clearly, it's a parabola because I see the squared term. It's a sideways parabola because the y is squared. And I'm going to take two seconds and solve for y. I would take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus and minus. Okay, so I'm just going to pick points in. If you don't know what this looks like, that's okay, I guess. Just plug numbers in. I'm going to say when x is 3, I clearly get a height of 0. And when x is 0, I get a height of positive radical 3. And I get a height of negative radical 3. So let's just make sure they're symmetric. I don't really care if you know exactly what that number is. Um, clearly it's less than 2, but greater than 1. But again, make it symmetric. When P passes through the point negative 1, 2, so negative 1, 2 is my P point, its Y coordinate is increasing at a rate of 3 units per second. So the derivative of Y with respect to time increasing is going to get me a positive 3 units per second. How fast, so there's my question, looking for a derivative, is the distance, everybody's favorite word, the derivative of distance with respect to time. How fast is that changing from point P to the origin at that instant? So let me finish drawing my picture. It says how fast from point P to the origin. This is what we're talking about. How fast is that distance changing um, at, that, at point P at that instant? All right, so clearly the formula I want to use is distance. That was the question. How fast is the distance changing? So I'm going to start with distance equals the lovely square root. Change in x squared plus change in y squared. Now a couple things to think before we get going. Okay, we've stressed all week long that you can't substitute in unless you have a constant. So out of the two points that you're using the distance of, is one of them never changing? Well, point P can certainly move. It's moving on this graph here, on this curve. But the origin, you're finding the distance to the origin, that's never going to change. So right off the bat, you know that one of these x's and one of these y's are 0. So I'm going to say my distance is really x squared plus y squared. Okay, the second thing I want to stress is I only want to see one variable before I derive. Okay, do I want to see all x's or do I want to see all y's? Well, it's very simple. What do you know something about? They told us that dy dt is 3 units per second. So that's implying that I only want to see y's. So I'm going to change this so every variable I see is the letter y. Okay, so what can you put in place of this x here? Well, you have that nice equation that y squared is equal to 3 minus x. Remember that was given, y squared equals 3 minus x. So what can you put 
in place of x? Well, I would say x is equal to 3 minus y squared. So in place of x, I'm going to put in 3 minus y squared, and it's that quantity squared, plus y squared. Once you've got that, you've done the hard part. The calculus is actually the easy part. So now I'll take its derivative. And I'm going to scroll down because I don't know how much room I'll have here. And I'm going to say the derivative, again, with respect to time. So anybody that doesn't have ET in it is now getting one. Okay. That big square root is going to come down as the 1 half. Keep the junk inside. All raised to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside. So I've got 2. Leave its inside. 3 minus y squared to the first times negative 2y dy dt. So plus, this is just 2y dy dt. Alright, so again, all I did was one nice big chain rule. If you really wanted, you could have foiled this junk out in here if, if that floats your boat, but I think we can do it without. So again, I brought my one half, left the inside, carefully took the derivative of the inside. I knew I needed dy dt's when I saw those y's. And now at this point, it's just plug and chug. They told us specifically at that point, uh, so recall that x equals negative 1, y equals 2. And uh, let's see, my question, I knew dy dt. So I would just have one half, 3 minus, let's see, 2 squared is going to get me 4. Whoops, it's that quantity squared plus 4, my y squared, times 2 times, let's see, 3 minus 4 to the first, uh, times negative 2 times 2, dy dt. Oh, shucks, what was that? Uh, dy dt was 3. Uh, so it's that negative 4 times 3 plus 2 times 2 times 3, and clearly you've got the idea. I'll let you finish it up from there, but we would just clean her up and we're good to go. So we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.